everyone welcome to Jem Kim now today's topic is on periodic properties part 2 video where we will deal with nomenclature of super heavy elements borderline elements and screening effect now before starting if you have not watched periodic properties part 1 video do watch it I will give the link in the description box now let us start now what are the super heavy elements the elements with atomic number greater than or equal to 100 is known as super heavy elements and their nomenclature is certainly different in manners now see from this part of the periodic table that is from 100 up to these positions occupies the super heavy elements and from 104 here is the transition super heavy elements and there is they are also known as transactinide elements now we will know how they are named now though they have some no, uh, name after the scientists but we have to know how to name them in a systematic manner so see the rules for writing the names the digits expressing the atomic number of the elements may be written using the following numerical roots that is for 0 we write nil for 1 un for 2 bi for 3 tri for 4 quad for 5 pent, for 6 hex, for 7 sept, and for 8 oct, and for 9 n. Now see, for example, if we write 1, 2, 0. So for 1, we will use un, for 2, we will use by, and for 0, we will use nil. So it will be like un, by, nil. And the roots are then put together and the name is terminated by using eum. So what do we mean by this? This is meant that when we write for 120 as un by nil, we add at the end eum, that is un by nil eum, which is written as u b n. And suppose we take for 187, 187, for 1 we take un, for 8 we take oct and for 7 we take sept. So the word becomes un oct septium and we write the symbol as u o s. u for un, o for oct and s for sept. Now in certain cases there is a repetition that is repetition of certain letters when we write n suppose using 9 when we use the 9 1 there is n and for 0 there is nil so in that case basically there is a repetition so we ignore one of the repetition and we write as n nil ignoring one of the n for biom also same thing there is two i so we ignore one i now see let us see our next examples now see for 101 we write un nil unium and the symbol is from u n and again u similarly for 102 un nil bium for 103 un nil trium and this continues for 104 5 6 7 8 9 now we come for this one 110 un un nilium and suppose this goes on and for 120 it is un by nilium for 120 this is this one now let us see next examples now see for 121 it is un by unium and the symbol is u b u symbols are different for each cases for 190 it is un n nilium u e n if suppose we take 900 for 900 see n nil nilium if here the 9 is written as n so 1 n is ignored since the 0 has a n in it now see the first elements that is from 101 to 111 they have some other names based on the name of the scientists and they are known as 101 is known as Mendelevium, next is Nobelium, next is Laurentium, Rutherfordium, Dubnium, Seaborgium, Bohorium, 
Hasnium, Hilt Nertium, Dermastadium, and Rontogenium. Now let us see. Now what are the borderline elements? The borderline elements are specifically known to be told to zinc, cadmium and mercury that is present here. This group is basically known as group 12 is known as borderline elements because at this side they have D block elements and at this side they have P block elements. So that's why they are known as borderline elements because they are not strictly transition element and they are referred to as borderline elements. Now we will see what is known as screening effect. Now from the word screening effect we can understand that something is related to the screening or hindrance right. Now the outermost electron experiences two types of force. The most outermost that is the valence electron experiences nuclear attraction from the nucleus as well as repulsion due to the inner electrons. The electrons present in the inner orbits also causes repulsion. It is due to the second force that the outermost electron cannot experience the total nuclear charge because they are hindered. But only a portion of it is known as the effective nuclear charge because these electrons and the orbits shell up and form a screen. In fact, ele inner electrons behave as a screen between the nucleus and outermost electron. And this phenomena is known as screening effect. This phenomena is known as screening effect. Okay. Now, let us see. Now, screening effect of orbitals. For S orbital, it is maximum as its shape is completely spherical. For P, it is less than S, then D and then F. We know the shape of orbitals as for S it is spherical, for P it is dumbbell, for D it is double dumbbell and for F it is highly complex structure and is diffused. So the electron density of S orbital can come closest to the nucleus. Hence, the S orbitals can screen the nucleus much more effectively as compared to that of P orbitals. With decrease in orbital penetrability from S to P to D to F, the diffuseness of the orbitals increases. Thereby, it causes a weakening their screening property. So, P, D and F has less screening effect. And in fact, these D and F orbitals exhibit poor screening effect. Due to the poor screening effect, the outermost electrons experience greater effective nuclear charge they experience greater effective nuclear charge so this was the brief introduction and importance of screening effect so this point is much important so hope it was helpful thank you for watching do not forget to like share subscribe and comment